Hello and welcome once again to the Geodynamics video lectures. This time our topic will be the basics of fluid mechanics and we'll start of course with an introduction to fluid mechanics. The goal of the video lecture is to introduce the basic concepts of fluid mechanics and then give you a few examples of situations where fluid mechanics can be applied. Now, in order to talk about fluid mechanics, we need to, of course, start with a few basic definitions. The first being, what is a fluid? And a fluid, we can define as any material that flows in response to an applied stress. So in many of the previous cases we've considered, such as you know, bending of an elastic lithospheric plate, there's no flow involved in that. It's simply an elastic bending. Um, particularly for elastic materials where the deformation can be restored when the stresses or forces acting on the plate are removed. Now to better clarify the difference between solids and fluids we have a little table here um, and solids as we've talked about so far will deform or be strained as a result of stresses that are applied. Now Fluids will also deform under applied forces, but the deformation in fluids will be continuous. Later on in the course, when we look at brittle deformation, you'll see examples of solids where the deformation is localized, not continuous across the material. Another thing we can note is in solids, we have stresses that can be related to strains. We've already seen some of these constitutive relationships talking about elasticity. Here, in a fluid, the stresses are related to the rate of strain. So it's simply strain divided by time, and, um, and we'll see that come up when we start looking at some of the calculations of velocities of the fluids and things like that. Lastly, the strain in a solid is the result of a displacement gradient, whereas strain in fluids will be the result of velocity gradients. So a displacement gradient would simply be a change in the amount of displacement within the solid, whereas a velocity gradient would be change in the rate of displacement within the solid. Now, we've seen already some basic rheological or constitutive laws, and again, this is just a reminder that we're talking about something that's an equation relating stress to strain in a solid or stress to strain rates in a fluid. Now the most basic fluid that we can consider is something called a Newtonian fluid or a linear viscous fluid. And this is a fluid where there is a linear relationship between the rate of strain and the applied stress. So my question for you, first question of this lecture set, is what would the relationship look like as an equation? So I'll let you pause the video and think about that for a moment and come back when you've got some ideas. Okay, let's see what you've come up with. So again, the Newtonian fluid is going to be something where there's a linear relationship between the rate of strain and the applied stress. So we could have something like this where we say that the stress is proportional to epsilon dot. Epsilon before was strain. If we put a dot on top of it, that means it is the strain rate. That is kind of a common notation to indicate the rate of something is to put a dot on top. So here we have stress proportional to strain rate. That's sort of, um, that's, you know, our relationship. We could be a little bit more clear here and call this stress being equal to the Greek letter eta times the strain rate, which is epsilon dot. So here, this letter eta is used uh, commonly to represent something called the dynamic viscosity or shear viscosity of the fluid and it's a material property of the fluid and dynamic viscosity is something that has units of pascal seconds. So just to give you an idea of the range of dynamic viscosities of common things, um, you don't often think of air as being a fluid. If you move your hands around in there, of course, you can feel something. Um, and air can be considered as a fluid with an approximate viscosity of one times 10 to the minus five pascal seconds, meaning it flows very, very easily. You can imagine moving your hands around like this, and then if you do the same thing in water, which has a little bit higher viscosity, of course you feel a little bit more resistance when you're moving your hands around in water. 
Now, if you were to put your hands within ice, probably you would not be able to very easily move them at all because the viscosity of ice is significantly higher. It's 19 orders of magnitude higher than the viscosity of water. And we haven't even reached the viscosity yet of rock salt, which is probably one of the least viscous um, materials that's common within the earth. Um, and it's got a approximate viscosity of 10 to the 17 pascal seconds, and then granite would be a full three orders of magnitude higher than that. Um, as you can imagine, granite is something that flows extremely slowly, but it will flow over geological time. Now, the ideas of fluid mechanics are based on conservation of essentially three quantities. Conservation of mass, conservation of momentum, which is um, something we'll see in the upcoming uh, lectures, and the conservation of energy. So these are the three things that are essential to conserve when you make any kind of calculation of how a fluid will move um, in the fluid mechanics world. So um, we can combine this conservation of mass, momentum, and energy with a rheological law, which then allows us to describe fluid movement under an applied force. So if we you know, push on the fluid, how is it going to move? Um, you know, we need to have these kind of basic relationships. Now, just to give you an idea here of where we're going and places where this can be applied, um, here's a nice photograph of an eruption of a volcano. Um, you can simulate things like the migration and flow of magma within the earth, um, flow of, you know, magma within a volcanic tube or something like that, a neck of a volcano um, can be simulated or calculated um, using a fluid mechanics approach. You can also look at things like folding of rock. So when rock is folded, it is deforming in a sort of a viscous manner. It's behaving essentially like a fluid. And so um, the formation of things like these big folds that are getting smaller um, as the layer thins out, that type of thing can also be considered in fluid mechanics. And of course, at a much bigger scale, things like mantle convection, where we have zones where the mantle is being heated and flowing upward, and it's sort of large scale convection is something that we can also consider um, using fluid mechanics approach. And in fact, most models of mantle convection are essentially fluid mechanics models um, with a very viscous fluid, the mantle. All right, so that's it for this introduction to fluid mechanics lecture. Go ahead and take the quiz and when you come back for the next one we'll start talking about the most basic kind of um, fluid that we'll consider and that is a flow uh, in one dimension within a channel.